All right, and we're back. So we're talking about under and over applied overhead. You may remember we talked about that for the first time in Chapter 2. And we said that because we're using a predetermined overhead rate, we're estimating overhead, we're not going to get it right on point. So we're going to have some differences between actual overhead and what we apply. If we apply too much, it would be over applied. If we apply too little, it's under applied. So now we're going to determine how we actually fix that at the end of the period. So again, under applied overhead exists when the amount of overhead applied to jobs is less than the total actual amount incurred. Over applied exists when the amount of overhead applied to jobs is more than the actual overhead incurred. Whenever you need to figure out your applied overhead, you take your predetermined overhead rate times the actual activity. So pair company's actual overhead, let's assume, is 650,000 with a total of 170,000 direct labor hours worked. And the predetermined overhead rate is $4 per direct labor hour. So to figure out the applied overhead, we're going to take the $4 per direct labor hour and multiply it by the actual activity. So that'll be 4 times 170 or 680,000. 680 is not the same as 650. I don't know if you could figure that out, but 680 is not the same as 650. So now we got to figure out, are we over or are we under? Well, I applied 680. Actual was 650. I applied too much. And that's why it's saying that the overhead is over applied. So what will pair company do? Well, they got to friggin' fix it. That's what they got to do. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to figure that out in a second. Before we move on, I, I want to show you a T account, which we'll use later, but I can't wait. I'm so excited. In the T account, actual is always going to go on the left of the over at a T account, and applied always goes on the right. And I remember it because it's alphabetical order, so AC comes before AP. So as we incur overhead, we fill up our T account on the debit side, and then when we apply it to WIP, it comes out of the overhead on the credit side. So if actual is 650 and applied is 680, that gives me a $30 balance on the credit side. And then I remember debit on the left, credit on the right, so I do drew and crow when we have a debit balance it means we're under applied thus drew if we have a credit balance it means we're over applied crow so that's like kind of a way i can double check my work i know logic tells me it's over applied but also in my t account it'll give me a credit balance which means it's over applied as well so you might find that useful and later on when we go through the journal entries you need to close out the over it account that t account is going to be key Trust me, if I can avoid T accounts, I do. But when it comes to over and under applied overhead, mm, that T account is great. It's the best thing you can use. So let's look at a little example here. Tiger Inc. has actual overhead cost of 1210 and a predetermined overhead rate of 4. Tiger Inc. worked 290,000 machine hours during the period. What's their overhead? Over or under applied, it wants to know. So give it a pause and give it a go. And now that you've tried it, or just kept watching the video, shame on you. First thing we're going to do is get our applied overhead. I was going to get my predetermined overhead rate, but it's given. So applied overhead is the POHR times actual activity. So our POHR is 4, our actual activity is the 290,000 machine hours that were actually worked. So 290 times 4 is 1,160,000. Then I'm going to whip out a T account, manufacturing overhead, actual on the left, applied on the right. Actual is 1,210,000. Applied is 1,160,000. Oh, oh, oh. And because I have a bigger debit balance, 1210 is bigger than 1160, 
the 50 balance now goes on the debit side, which remember is drew under applied. So we're 50,000 under applied, the answer would be B. The T account's nice, the Drew Crow is nice, but also use some common sense. Actual was 1210, I only applied 1160, I didn't apply enough. That's also why it's under applied. And look at that, I got it right. So how do we get rid of the over or under applied overhead? Well, there's two options. We either shove it in cost of goods sold or we shove it in whip finished goods and cost of goods sold. Why do we shove it in those accounts? Well, let's think of that flow of cost information that we went over together. Everything starts at raw materials. Then we add direct labor and overhead into whip. Then from whip, we go to finished goods. And then from finished goods, we go to cost of goods sold. Now for most companies, the amount in inventory is far smaller than the amount that's in cost of goods sold at the end of the period, which is why the easiest option is just shove it all to cost of goods sold because it'll end up getting there anyways. But if we want to be more accurate, we can allocate the cost into whip, finished goods, and cost of goods sold because if we didn't screw up in the first place, the overhead would be still in those three accounts. So we have 30000 uh, of over applied overhead from our original example with Pairco that we need to get rid of. I want to go back real fast and just remind you of our T account here where we found that 30 in over applied overhead. So what that means is we need to get rid of this overhead balance. So if we have a credit in our overhead account, the way we're going to get rid of that credit is by debiting the overhead account. So that T account is very helpful in letting me figure out how to come up with my my journal entry. So if I have a credit balance and overhead to get rid of it, I'm going to debit overhead and then I'm going to credit the account I choose to shove it in. So here it is in the nice beautiful T account form. We have a 30,000 balance over applied to get rid of it we're going to credit overhead which means we're going to excuse me to get rid of the credit we're going to debit the overhead which means we end up crediting cost of goods sold remember these are accounts both go up with debits and down with credits so we're getting rid of the balance in the overhead account and moving it into cost of goods sold. The end result is cost of goods sold goes down. Why does that make sense? Well, if we over applied overhead, we apply too much cost. So to fix it, what logically has to happen? You got to take away cost. Ha! Huh, who knew? Accounting actually makes sense. So the journal entry uh, for that, it's not even shown. Let me show it to you. It would be debit manufacturing overhead for the 30,000 and credit cost of goods sold for the 30000 That makes the overhead account go up. It's already got a negative balance with that 30 over applied, so putting it up 30 brings it down to zero, and then our expense account goes down as a result. Again, there's logic here. We over applied overhead. That means we applied too much, so when we fix it, it results in cost going away. The opposite would happen if we had under-applied overhead. With under-applied overhead, we don't apply enough, so we end up increasing cost of goods sold when we get rid of it. So here we go. Let's assume the overhead is applied to ending whip, finished goods, and cost of goods sold instead of shoving it all to one account. So it told us that the balance in each of those accounts is 68 204 and 408 for a total of 680. So what we need to do is figure out first what proportion of the total each one represents. So you take the balance in each one divided by the total of all three and that tells us 10% of the balance is WIP, 30% finished goods and 60% cost of goods sold. Then we're going to take those proportions and multiply it by the 30,000 that we're trying to allocate. So we take 30,000 times 10%, we get 3. 30,000 times 30%, we get 9. 30,000 times 60%, and we get 18. And that 
is how we're going to allocate the overall 30,000. These numbers have to be given, and then we utilize them to calculate these percentages. We take the balance in each one divided by the total of 680. That's where these percentages came from. And then we multiply the overhead we want to up, we want to get rid of the over or under applied overhead by those percentages. Then we use those amounts to do our journal entry. So because we need to debit WIP to get rid of it, we debit the WIP account, and then we're going to end up crediting these other accounts, which makes them all go down. So our WIP, finished goods, and cost of goods sold all go down, which again should make sense because we're fixing our wrong. We over applied overhead, so to fix it, we take away cost. Isn't this fun? So our two choices, again, when we want to get rid of the under or over applied overhead is we either shove it all in cost of goods sold or we allocate it. Obviously, allocating is a pain in the ass, but it is considered more accurate, and that's why it's a pain in the ass. Anything good in life takes effort. So let's do a, another little quick check here and see if you learned anything. What is the effect of over applied overhead on net income? So remember, over applied overhead means we apply too much. So when we fix it, what does that do to income? Pause it and take a guess. All right, welcome back. Hopefully that was an educated guess. If we over apply overhead, what ultimately happens, whether we allocate it all to cost of goods sold or among WIP finished goods and cost of goods sold, I like to just do out a little T account here, give myself a little example. We've got actual and we got applied. So if I over applied, that means the applied was more than actual. So let's just make it 100 for actual, 110 for applied. That means I've got a $10 credit balance, which is Crow for over applied. To get rid of it, I'm going to end up debiting overhead, which means I credit the other thing. So I'm going to debit MOH 10, credit cost of goods sold 10. What does that do to cost of goods sold? Makes my expense go down. If expense go down, what happens to net income? I hope you figured out it goes up. You don't want to do out the debits and the credits. That doesn't help you. Then just use logic. Over applied means I apply too much cost. To fix it, you take away cost. When you take away cost, it makes profit go up. So net income would go up. which is the answer. <gasps> Can you believe it? We're at the end of chapter three. Another happy day is here. Now again, I'm gonna say it probably at the end of every chapter I go over, if you wanna be successful in the class, you need to practice. Watching me do it is boring, I'm sure. Sorry about that. And it's hopefully helpful as well, but it's not as good as you doing the practice problems on your own. A lot of the problems we do in the PowerPoint are pretty basic, and you need to practice doing some more complex problems. So you can practice by doing the homework that you're required to do, and then also the additional problems on Canvas. Though you're not required to do those, if you don't do them, you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt when it comes to quiz and exam time. So please, please, please practice, practice, practice. That is the key to success in the class, and we want you to succeed. We don't make it easy. We challenge you, but the challenge is good. All you got to do is be up for the challenge, do the practice, get help, reach out when you need help, and we're here to assist you in any way that we can. Use the discussion boards to ask questions, email your professor. We can help you succeed. All you have to do is try and then ask for help when you get stuck.